Alrighty, boys and girls, I'm going to try to make a video today. I haven't really been into it lately. Um, just been doing other stuff, hanging out with the family, went on vacation, uh, taking the kids snowboarding, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, not car and video related, so going to try to get back in the swing of things here. I think what I want to do is a compression test, uh, probably a compression and leak down test on this motor. Last time I had it out to the track, it went... Um, 880 something and and then I just kind of parked it since then so I when I had the blue truck here from the last video I had this parked out in the driveway and then I did drive it a little bit and I noticed just while I was warming it up and idling it it was getting high high cooling pressure uh, and then when I would crack my overflow the cooling pressure would drop back down so just idling and coming up to temp with my overflow tight it would come up to like 19 psi 20 psi cooling pressure and then when I would crack the overflow it would drop back down to 15 so that tells me that it's building pressure in the radiator and into the overflow uh, and holding pressure here and then when I bleed this pressure off it would drop, drop back down to what the cap pressure would be so hopefully that's not uh, a sign of something bad but I feel like there's a chance I might have hurt the motor on one of those couple of those last passes because uh, I was also having an issue with it not shifting properly and I thought that was traction control causing it to go one to three uh, but it was actually the, the shift parameters needed to be adjusted when I disabled the traction control is when I noticed that it was actually commanding it to shift wrong or it was shifting late so it would go one three and uh, there's a chance that it's shifting 1-3 that many times might have hurt the head gasket. So, kind of just want to do that. Double check everything, just a little gut check. We're already into March. Winter's kind of flying, but I haven't really done much else with this since I made the intercooler and radiator bracket. I still got to paint this thing. I'm working on getting a throttle body for it. I actually did buy one and it's way too big. I tried getting like a, a G8 throttle body, elect electronic throttle, and that one didn't fit. It was too big for that. So I think what I might end up doing is using the uh, Trailblazer throttle body. Because that is almost, or Envoy throttle body. Because that is almost the right size for the 2JZ intake. I'm pretty set on wanting to do a drive-by wire throttle and keep it simple. I'm probably going to do a max ECU. I'm pretty convinced that I'm going to do a max ECU on this. I'll probably buy that pretty soon when I get a few more pennies saved up. I've also been trying to find an 8.8 rear end for this thing for like two months and I haven't been able to find one. Um, they're either like out of state or they're $2,000 because they're already built. So I'm just looking for a, like a, you know, $100, $200, 88 that I can shorten. So I'm still on the hunt. If anybody's local and has one, let me know. I'm looking for an Explorer 88. I uh, tried the junkyard. There wasn't any Explorers there. I tried uh, Carpart. There's a guy who's going to contact me next week from Carpart.com. And then Marketplace has been dead, so eventually we'll get something for that. So I'm going to warm this thing up and then we'll do the compression test. Alrighty guys, I'm going to put some gloves on and I got long sleeves on. I'm going to try not to completely burn myself doing this. I usually like to do compression tests when they're hot though. Hard to get to. I did burn my bicep pretty good a couple times trying to reach around like this. I got a pretty decent... Pretty decent scar on there from reaching down like this when I was doing power steering pump at the track when I blew the line that time and accidentally touched it on there. I think this will be the first time that I had a that I took a spark plug out of this thing. All right, got all the plugs out. Just gonna unplug my coil and injector harness. Then I'll hold the throttle open and crank it. All right, 
Cylinder one is 150. And I'll just repeat the same with all the other ones. <clears throat> this tester normally reads around 150, 160. Um, I'm not too concerned if it's not reading or 180. I just want to make sure that all the cylinders are reading the same or close. I think it's supposed to be like within 10% or something. interesting no compression on that cylinder and this this plug looks a little dark too so you can see that this one looks a little black dark compared to that one interesting I didn't think it looked uh, that far off to be concerning but <laughs> yeah now I really wonder I wonder if it had a dead hole the whole time and I was trying to Get it to go faster. As I was trying to run it on 30 pounds, I was trying to turn the boost up because I ran like 25 and then I was trying to run 30, but it didn't really seem like it went much faster at 30. And then it started kind of pushing out of the overflow and out of the catch can. So I wonder if the pistons messed up or something. <clears throat> That's interesting. That might make sense why going from 20, 20 pounds to 30 pounds with this, almost the same amount of timing that it didn't really go much faster. <clears throat> Only like a tenth faster. <clears throat> All right, so that one's like 160. I would have thought that spark plug would, would have looked a lot worse though for zero compression. That's Interesting. Inter interesting. Maybe like 157. Might sound weird, but that kind of kind of makes me happy that that doesn't have compression. That or that I found something that's off. <clears throat> something wrong. You know, I'm sure some of you guys understand what I'm talking about, that something doesn't seem off or something doesn't seem right and then you actually find something that's not right. It feels good to find a problem. Maybe it's something stupid like a rocker or loose or... 160. All right, well, here's what we got. 50, 60, 57, 60, 50. Six was a low, little low, 120, and 145 on eight. Uh, zero, it's supposed to have a little, it's supposed to have more than zero from what I, from what I read on the internet. Uh, so I don't know, hopefully it's just something stupid like a, a uh, rocker loose or something. I'll pull the valve cover off quick and see. That's it. Well guys, actually, you know what? I just remembered when I was at the track, like the last couple passes, it wouldn't build boost on the two-step. I don't know if you remember that video. I would put it on the trans brake and it wasn't building boost off the line. Like I tried to go for another pass. I think the second to last pass, the mile an hour was good, like 154, but it didn't have as good of a 60 foot. So I went again and then it didn't build boost again. So I wonder if I heard it on like the third to last pass. Yeah, that's probably what happened. I did go, I did drive it like a month or so ago, just kind of around the area here and it did feel a little odd. And then I put it on the two-step again, it didn't build boost right away. It built really, really slow. So that's, that's probably what happened. All right, so pulled out the bore scope and this bore scope actually takes a, takes a video. Hold it, starts recording.
so I don't see any issues with the piston. I can get all the way around. I was able to see all the way around it before. I don't see any obvious issues, but at the top of the cylinder, almost looked like there was some some stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump air into the cylinder and see if it comes out of anywhere, out of the radiator or something. All right, well, I did pump some air into the cylinder and didn't really find anything convincing. So I decided to disable the rockers. I have them re-enabled now, so I'll do the compression test. <clears throat> And we got nothing, but then when I do this, and I disable the rockers. compression 150 <clears throat> so it's hanging the valve open it's got to be got to be hanging the valve I wonder if the other one number six will do the same thing because that was at 120 I wonder if I disable those if it'll be 150 because that reads 150 now so when it's with the rockers disabled it's fine which is strange that it has zero with them tight. Like it must still be firing that cylinder because the spark plug doesn't look that different. So that's special. All right, let's see if we can find, find the whammy here. I'm gonna tighten the exhaust valve and we'll do them one at a time and see which valve it is. All right, exhaust valve tight. All right, exhaust valve tight, no. No comprende. valve back up. We'll tighten the intake valve down. All right, so this should have compression, right? One of the valves tight doesn't have compression, but both of them loose is fine. What would be the odds that both of the valves on the same cylinder have an issue? Only when they're tight. All right, I'm gonna do an experiment here. I got the uh, cylinder one rockers loose. I'm gonna put the cylinder one rockers on cylinder two with the same push rods and See if I get compression back. Cylinder one rockers on number two. Well, 
Okay. All right, still nothing on there. All right, so now I'm gonna try cylinder one push rods over here. So I have the push rods and the rockers from cylinder one over there. Nothing. Weird, 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 weird. I wonder if it's like a tulip valve or something like that. Like the, the valve is tulip yeah. and it's like caving in. So the valve is sticking out farther so it has more pressure on it. You know, the lip of the valve is bent in a little bit, tuluped a little bit, and the stem is a few thousandths of an inch taller than normal if it's just enough to crack that valve and leak. Because it couldn't have been happening the whole time. There was clearly something that happened where it started, you know, not building boost as easy and stuff like that. So I wonder if it's a tulip valve, valve issue. Could be. Interesting. Well, I'm going to end it here. Let me know what you think, and I'm going to... I'm not going to get any farther tonight tearing it apart, but maybe I'll have to pull the heads off, pull the motor out, and look at the valves. And could probably just check the head gaskets and all that schnitzel then and do that. But interesting. Let me know what you think. Tulip valve? Is that what it is? 